Right, grade 12 for today's exercise we're going to be doing a transition piece and if we look here we can see that there's a front view and a top view and I've taken the liberty of drawing this little auxiliary here on the side that's for the transition which is an effect in the placement here is a left view. Now they do tell you only to develop the transition so you are not required to develop the two prisms at the top and the bottom. Okay so for all intents and purposes to simplify it um, you have to draw it in but I'm going to remove those two parts just to clarify as we go along now the first thing that you want to do is you want to start here where it's going to be cut open so we're going to start here on A1 okay I have numbered it this way so the base point of number 1, 2, 3, 4 and the top of numbered A, B, C, D and just to make it a little bit easier as we go along so now this is not a true length this corner here on the top view is actually oblique okay so B2 the green one there and C3 those are diagonals okay the left side is actually flat going straight up but these two sides and this one they are at an angle the top of course being a true shape as well a square so once you've got that in order to find the true length of this line there's more than one way to do it but the easiest way you put your compass on A and 1 and you swing it until the lead part of the compass is in line with A so we swing the base point 1 out and then you take it to the top view and you stop when you go on the level of 1 so this point 1 has now moved from here to here and then you connect it back to A. So by doing that method you actually have created a new true length line. So this line here is the true length of that one. Okay. Then you take that distance with your compass or with a ruler and you mark down the line. Now again this line can be at any placement and it can be at any angle. It's non-specific but if you make it too horizontal the development might go over the views. If you make it too vertical, you might run out of space on the right side. So with this one, I found that a roughly 45 degree angle works quite well. Then next, now the reason why we have to draw an extra line on that trapezium there is that we can't actually do a trapezium shape at a time when we do a transition. So we have to do it a triangle at a time. So we always divide our shapes into triangles by adding extra lines onto the surface areas. So on this one I've added B1 there, but again that's not a true length. So to solve that problem again, I put my compass on B1, I swing out the base point again 1, and it goes straight up. You do the same method as before this one, and then it goes all the way here there to B. So this purple one here is the true length for this purple line that we've constructed. And again, you can take that distance with the purple line, and you can put it on one and you can swing it with your compass so it will basically look something like this so in order to find point B you take AB which is already a true length in the top view you put your compass on AB you put it on A you swing and then you take the true length the purple line there and you put it on one and you swing and with the two collate with the two meet you actually have your point B and you could connect it for your triangles and then we have this triangle done next we want to find B to 1 obviously it shares the same line B1 with the first triangle so we have to find this true length and the base is already a true length because the base is flat okay and parallel with the horizontal plane so we only have to find this true length here to find that triangle so to do that you do the same as before you put your compass on B the lead part on 2 and you swing it out until it's in line with B and then you take it straight up and there you can see the point and then you connect it to the top point and that is the true length for this diagonal B2 that we see here okay then to complete that triangle so to complete that triangle we take the true length from the front view we put it on B and we swing it out then we take the base 1, 2, which is already a true length. We put it on 1, we swing it, and where the 2 cross, we can just connect it. And there is our 
next triangle which also completes the first side okay now once you've done that now you have a bit of a sticky wicket normally you can't see the side because it's flat and strap you can see the front bit as well it goes up vertically so to solve that problem what I did I added this little auxiliary view here and you have to basically do the same thing as before and add a line but now you are not required to draw this so in your mind's eye see that point goes from 2 to C if you can envision that the, there's an imaginary line going from 2 to C then you can still find the, con the true length of that line even if you don't draw this but if you're not able to visualize it, then you might have to do this little auxiliary view on, on somewhere on the page just to help you, help you out. Okay? So since this line runs from C to 2, now you could have gone from B to 3 as well. It would have been the same thing. But I've gone from C to 2. So I'm going to take the imaginary line. It's going there from C to 2. And I'm going to do that true length as well. So I put my compass on C. I swing it out until it's in line with C. I go straight up on the base I connect it to the top point and there is my new true length for that one all right so now to complete that triangle what you're going to do is you are simply going to say okay I have this true length there it is the purple one okay running from B down so it's actually uh, the line that runs from C to 2 from the top of C to the base of 2 so you're going to take that distance, you put it on two, and you swing it with your compass. Now the top bases are the same all over the place, so you can basically just put your compass on that yellow line there, rinse and repeat, swing it round, and with the two cross, you connect the line, and you find the third triangle. Next, we want to find this one as well, okay, and they do share that purple line. Now we already have this as a true shape, okay. But we've already calculated the true length for that diagonal. So it's the same as this one here, this green one here. Okay, which was B2 before, now it's going to be C3. So we take that distance with our compass and we rinse and repeat. Okay, uh, if we want to find C3 later on. So basically, I'm going to take the true length. Now you could take it from this auxiliary view. But you can simply take it from there as well, the true length of the base, because you get the same going round. Okay, so you can take one of these base sides, you set your compass to it, and you swing. Then I take the true length here, and I put it on C, and I swing, and where the two cross, I connect the two lines, and you will find the next triangle. And now we've completed this one as well. So now this side is done, and this side is done. Now the next side, which is here C, D, 4, 3, this is exactly the same as this one. So to save time, we're simply going to take the shape from here and copy it over to the other side. So for example, we can take this with our compass and we can swing it. We can take that distance with our compass and swing it. Okay. So we're just going to copy it over to the other side. So there, for example, I've taken that with my compass and I swung it out. I've taken the purple line B1 with my compass for C4 and I swing it out by placing it on C and with the two cross I get the next triangle. So this one is exactly the same as that one. Then you want to repeat that. The next triangle that we want to get is this one. So this one should be the same as that one. Okay, so you take that distance with your compass, which is the same as that one, and you take the distance of A1 and you put it on four and you swing it and with the two cross you just connect it and we have our next triangle here so now we've done with this side as well and the last one we have to do is D A 1 and 4 now D again we have the problem like before we can't do a trapezium shape straight away so we add an extra line that line going from A to 4 to divide it into two triangles okay so basically to find the true length of this now you can swing a up but then you have to do it over this view so just keep swinging the ba the bottom base points out so i'm swinging four out until it's in line with a i take the line up until it's in line with four and then i take it to the top of a 
and there's the true length for this purple line A4 that I want to find. So I put my compass on that and I put it on 4 and I swing and then I put my compass on the previous top base point and I swing it and with the two cross I just connect it and we have our next triangle so now the only one that's left is this large one that's sitting right here okay so obviously with the base is already a true length so we only have to find that distance but it's the same as A1 so it goes back to A1 so we already have that there's A1 okay so to do that one all you have to do is take the previous base put it on 4 swing it take the distance of A1 put it on A swing it and with the two cross you just connect the lines and then you have the development complete now last but not least remember guys that you mustn't erase your constructions when it's done please make sure that your fold lines are in between dark and light so it's not quite construction it's not quite dark lines obviously the outline must be dark and this is basically what it should look like but you must still leave all the necessary constructions for marking on the view. And that is it. Have a great day, guys.